morning. Everybody hear me? Okay. Thank you very much, Art, and uh, really appreciate being here. And as Art mentioned, I'm just one of four offices that serve the state of Alabama, and we are very proud to serve the state of Alabama. Uh, we could talk a little bit about the meteorology of the event, but also talk a little bit about the damage surveys that we do and the assessments that we do and how it all ties in together. Uh, we could spend hours on this. I have 15 minutes, so it's going to be kind of a down and dirty presentation, but you'll get the gist of it. The bottom line is, for this setup for this event, we had very warm and humid summer-like conditions near the surface. And back to our northwest, we had winter-like conditions, very cold temperatures aloft, almost like midwinter type of conditions. And then on top of it, as the cold air moved over the warm air near the surface, we had intense upper-level winds. So think of it as like a hot air balloon. When you have a hot air balloon and it's going up in very cold air, it's going to want to rise a lot faster. So what this means basically is that when thunderstorms developed, they had explosive development. The intense winds aloft did a couple of things. First of all, it's what we call wind shear or the turning of the winds with height, and that created the spin. So we had the storms that were rotating, mesocyclones, what we call the supercells. But it also did a couple of other things. Tornadoes form in the updraft region of a thunderstorm. And because of the high winds, the rain was blown well downstream. So what that meant is that the tornadoes could sustain themselves for much longer periods of time than they typically do here across the southeast. And uh, a lot of people that we have talked to said that they just have never seen it. Many of our tornadoes here are rain wrapped. But for this event, we had many people said that they had some straight line winds, high winds, rain, and then several minutes of no rain before the tornado struck. In fact, a lot of people said that they actually saw debris falling out of the air, and that was their sign to take cover. So it was uh, a setup that was very unusual uh, for, for uh, down here. Just wanted to really show you this picture. This was what many of us saw on when you look at TV, of course, what we were seeing at the National Weather Service is what we call the hook echo. And basically, we're looking at a vertical uh, view of the thunderstorm, and then this is from the top down. So think about there's the rain over here, and then the rain is wrapping around the tornado back in this direction. So again, high wind shear blowing that rain downstream, and that is rotating for a large portion of the thunderstorm. Just to show you the incredible rotation that occurred with some of these storms, we took a cross section and looked at the tornado that came across Tuscaloosa. And you can see here, this is at a height of close to 35,000 feet, about six miles high. And this is rotating at 125 knots, 140 miles an hour. So six miles high in the atmosphere, this th tornadic thunderstorm was rotating at 140 miles an hour. And as we get in the lowest mile, five to 7,000 feet, it was rotating at over 200 miles an hour. So just some of the highest wind shear, highest what we call delta velocities or the rotation within the thunderstorm that many of us have ever seen. And uh, let me just tell you, for those of us that have been in the weather service for a long time, like myself, I got calls from all over the country, I've never been through something like this. And I've worked in seven states. I've seen many F5 tornadoes in Texas. Um, a lot of horrific events, but nothing, nothing that has rivaled what happened here in Alabama on the 27th. Now, I could show you all kinds of parameters that we looked at during this day, but in a nutshell, this one says it all. This is significant tornado parameter, and really what we look at is values, and it pulls together all the data, what we expect for significant tornadoes. That is an EF2 or greater. And of course, tornadoes are ranked EF0 through 5, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Anything greater than one means that you have a pretty high chance of a significant tornado occurring. And I want to show you, here are values of 10, 11, and 12. So we just had an incredible setup. Um, literally, I felt nauseous the day before the event as we saw these parameters coming together. Uh, we kind of knew about three to four days in advance that the setup was occurring. The Storm Prediction Center was already talking about the possibility of long tracked violent, strong to violent tornadoes. And basically, the day before, we were briefing the State Emergency Management Agency, and they were going ahead and activating their EOC, state EOC. We were briefing our emergency managers across the state uh, and just letting them know. 
The Storm Prediction Center put us under a high risk during early morning, late night, early morning of the 27th for a good portion of Alabama, and that is the highest rating that you can have for uh, the potential for a severe weather outbreak. Now this is the one that I, I gave a lot of briefings on that we posted, put on our websites. Uh, this was the values of the expected chance of a tornado and basically anywhere within a point within 25 miles. So the outline was, of course, you know, as, as weather folks, we're all about probabilities. And they were saying that within a point, anywhere within this area, you had a 45% chance of a tornado at any point within 25 miles in this area. That's incredible values. Typically, it's a lot less than that. I'm going to go through a couple setups. There's actually three waves of severe weather that occurred across Alabama on the 27th. It actually occurred during the pre-dawn hours from about 3 to 7 a.m. in the morning, another wave around noon, and then the horrific supercells and all the tornadoes that occurred on the, during the evening, afternoon and evening hours. And this is a composite showing um, all the what are called vertical shear, but basically this is Doppler radar, and we just put all the circulations together from all the individual tracks, and you can see all the tracks of supercells that came across the state during this day. And of course, a lot of them occurred back in eastern Mississippi as well, but you can see a lot of these long tracks that occurred. Uh, some of these tracks, the tornadoes that went through uh, Marion, Franklin counties, um, Lawrence County, they were on the ground for 135 miles. The storm that came through Tuscaloosa had an initial track about 70 miles. There was a break of, break of about a uh, couple miles around Fultondale, north of Birmingham, and then it was on the ground for another 80 miles. Now, the National Weather Service issues polygon warnings. Think of it this way. When you see the, a hurricane making landfall, you see that area where they expect the the uh, hurricane to make landfall and it looks like a cone. Well, we do the same thing with our individual thunderstorms and we put in just those areas that we believe that there will be an actual threat of severe weather and a potential for a tornado. So all the red indicates for the entire day the amount of tornado warnings that were issued uh, for the state of Alabama. Yellow indicates severe thunderstorm warnings, non-tornadic, and then the green represents flash flood warnings. So it was an incredibly busy day. And then this is just one of the scales. When we issue, uh, when we do damage surveys, which I'm about to describe, what we do is we look for the beginning and the end of a tornado. We look at the maximum width, and then we look for the maximum intensity. So even though a tornado may not be an F5 or EF5 all the way on the ground, we rank the entire tornado by its highest intensity. So we had a number of EF5 uh, tornadoes that occurred. This event was not confined to just Alabama, but the entire eastern United States. And on this day, the uh, red indicate tornado reports, the blue indicates severe th weather in the form of straight line winds or hail, and the green represents flash flooding, or excuse me, hail reports, and then the uh, blue is green reports. My mistake there. But you can see that tornadoes occurred all the way up in the east coast, all the way up in the upper New York state on this day. So this was a major outbreak. A lot of comparisons to the 1974 outbreak. There weren't as many violent tornadoes across the entire area. Certainly for our area there were, this is a record and I'll describe that, but for the entire outbreak it wasn't similar in, in uh, 74 in that respect. So in Alabama we average about 37 tornadoes per year. We shattered that. The record of tornadoes that occurred across the state since about 1950 has been 94. We had 103 tornadoes in April alone in the state of Alabama. And all those occurred on two dates, on the 15th and on the 27th. What a lot of people, for those of you who are coming in from town, we had an incredible event where we had over 40 tornadoes in the state on the 15th of April and then followed by the 27th. Year to date, we are at 115, so again, you can see all but 12 tornadoes have occurred during the month of April. We've had nine EF4 tornadoes in April. There have only been 32 in the state of Alabama since 1950. Uh, there have been six EF5 tornadoes since 1950. Two occurred on this day. So that just lets you know that we had approximately one-third 
of all violent tornadoes reported in Alabama in 19, since 1950 on one day. Just an incredible outbreak. I want to show some of the loops. This is the pre-dawn hours coming through. This was the first line of storms that is coming through. And I'll zoom in and show you a couple of uh, pictures. Again, I, for the length of time, I can, well, we got all kinds of data we can show you, and, and we'll be talking about this across the state in months to come. But this squall line had some embedded tornadoes, uh, nine tornadoes, in fact, just in the squall line, and produced widespread 90 to 100 mile an hour straight line winds across a large portion of the state. All right, here's a second wave that's developing back here. This is about 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. We go through the next loop. Now we get about closer to noon. This is uh, another wave that's going across the Huntsville and, and the other areas of northern Alabama. And then these are the individual supercells that are developing out ahead of uh, the cold front, which is actually well, well back here. And we'll see that develop here in a second. This is the first tornadic storm that's going to go across Coleman. And then this is going to be, uh, there's a number of these supercells, all tornadic, and you can kind of, can't see too well here, but you can kind of see these hook echoes that are developing clearly on a lot of these storms. 